Hi again. It's nice to see you. Um, last video, we read where the wild things are and we created our own little wild thing. Now remember <coughs> that we used the head of one animal, the body of another, and the feet of a third. And these animals were all completely different. None of them were the same. So we had a horse's head, a bird's body, and feet from like an alligator kind of creature. So today what I'm going to do is finish this picture and show you how to create what's called a watercolor resist. So, um, or a wax resist, you might have heard it that way. Either way, um, it's the same process and all you need today is your picture, a paintbrush, watercolor paints, and a paintbrush. Wait, I think I said a paintbrush. Your picture, a paintbrush, watercolor paints. Oh, and water. Duh. Okay, so anyways, um, you can't have watercolor paints without water. So um, I'm going to show you that in just a second. And um, it's going to uh, finish our picture. Remember, I've told you before, over and over, our pictures aren't done until they're completed from top to bottom, side to side. So we'll get this guy, this guy finished up. All right, and then it'll be something really cool for you to show off. All righty, so here we go. I have our picture of our wild thing. Remember a horse's head, bird's body, and alligator feet. Um, I have these watercolor paints. Now these I got from uh, my granddaughter. I'm actually borrowing them from her because I didn't have any other cake watercolors um, here at the house. So I'm gonna use these. Uh, she had these in some kind of an art kit. Okay. Um, I probably got it for her for Christmas. I don't remember. Okay. So what we're going to do, um, I have a bowl of water and my paintbrush. And I'm, I put some water on these cakes already to get them soft so that we have, because um, these are pretty old. And watercolor paints are really neat because even though they dry up and they get old, they still work. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paintbrush and you see this? I'm going about halfway on the paper and I'm just going to get it all wet. Okay. Even over top the head. Okay. And over part of the body and okay, just about halfway through the paper though. Okay. So there's that. It's all wet. Now I'm going to take my blue paint and I'm going to use this color blue up here and I'm just going to come right across my paper okay and if you notice right here this is going um, right over top of the horse's head and the horse where we put the, the gray crayon you can see that it's not sticking look at this it's dripping right off not sticking there because the wax will resist or not take not hold on to the paint that we're putting on here okay and i'm going to use this paint go all the way down to the center right where i stopped with the water okay now you see all these drops here maybe i don't want them there so i use a paper towel and i'll just kind of blot them off get rid of those that way it dries a little faster and a paper towel can be used to create like clouds in the sky. Okay. Maybe I want a little darker paint up here. So I'll put a little darker blue up here. Okay. And I don't have to go all the way across my, my horse's head. Okay. But there we go. Maybe uh, since I have light blue here, I'll put some light blue. Ooh, wow, that's a lot darker than I thought it was going to be. But I'll use water and thin it out and just put it out here like this. And again, I use my paper towel and just touch in through the horse's head a little bit. Maybe get rid of some puddles that are out here. Okay. Now I'm going to take the water and my paintbrush and clean my paintbrush out a little bit. Wipe the water off. Okay. And do the same thing for the feet. I'm going to get this all wet down here. There it 
it is all nice and wet. Okay, and now, because I need a ground for him, I decided I'll just use these greens over here. And look at that, I got a lot of water on there. Now remember, if your paintbrush is drippy, that's a wet brush. So I have wet paper, a wet brush because it's all drippy. So this is wet on wet, which means it's wet paint, a lot of drippy paint. See, drippy, drippy, drippy paint all over. And I'm going to go right next to the sky, okay? So that it's, there's no white spots here. If you look outside, don't look out today because it's all white on the ground. But if you look outside during the spring or summer or even the autumn, you'll notice that the sky and the ground come together. Even today, the ground and the sky will come together if it just happens to have a lot of snow on the ground. Okay, so I'll clean that paintbrush out. Maybe um, I use this lighter green here. Ooh, I like that color green. And I'll put some of this green in here, like this, just because it's different. Now, um, you'll notice, though, I'm going to hold this up closer here so you can see. These paints are pretty old, a couple of years old, I, I imagine. And we have little dots in here. And that's okay, because all we're trying to do today is just get these colors down for ground and sky. I'm going to take this. I noticed I have it's really dark here. So I'll just pull that up a little bit more. Maybe I'll add some more dark back in here because it's farther away. Okay. Just want to show that it's they do come together. Okay. Now <clears throat> I'm a very impatient person when it comes to drying. So I'll take my paper towel. And I'm going to blot some of this color off again. Okay. And when it's all dry, which will take just a couple of minutes, then I have one more step to do. So I'm going to let this dry. And you guys don't have to watch it dry. That would be quite boring. So we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, I just wanted to let my... Um, picture dry so we didn't have all that wet paint hanging around uh, for this next step because all we're going to do now is just trace out our wild thing and we can do this either with black marker or uh, um, uh, black crayon if you were using oil pastels for this you could use black uh, for that and the reason we're going to trace it out is so that it looks and stands out a little more. See, this is fine, but when I bring black around it, it kind of makes it stand out more. Okay, so I'm going to go and I'm going to use this black marker and just trace around the outside edges here of my wild thing. It also helps make it look a little more finished, okay? Just gives it a few more little details because I can go and add some black onto the sky here where the mane of the horse is. You can see little black lines here, okay? And that helps give it some more uh, detail and some more texture. Feet. Okay. Now, as I said, you could use, uh, I have a thin line marker here, you could use a thick marker, you could use a sharpie marker, whichever one you want to use. Uh, black crayon works really well, black oil pastel works great, okay? So there it is, just all outlined. Now, I can add more detail, okay? And if you notice, what I just did is I separated the two feet with a black line. Okay, so I should bring that all the way up. Right across, see now it looks like he's got some feathers in there. Okay, same thing I'll do with the wing up here is I'll add some black in here. And 
give this a little more detail here, maybe around the head, in the ear, in his eye, maybe his mouth. We'll even make a little mark like that so he's smiling, see? Okay. And even on the uh, scales that I put down here, we can use some black marker and just make those dark lines like this. You see how I put the dark lines next to the darker crayon lines? It just helps give it some more um, some texture, some more detail here. Okay. And that's all it is. Just real quick. Now, I've been looking at my wild thing and saying, wow, he just looks funny. There's something he needs. So I thought that because he's a bird, shouldn't he have a tail here? Like this, maybe? Now I can draw this right over top of my paint. Okay, and I'll use that same blue that I used before to outline the tail. Maybe I'll make it like that. Yeah, like a swallow. Swallow is a type of bird. Okay. And, whoops, I made it all blue. It should have been purple. Oh, well. I'll go over it with that purple color. Make it darker. Okay. Bring that up in here. Make that a little darker in the back here to make them look like they're connected. There we go. Yep. So there it is. See? Even I make mistakes. But... I don't get all upset, and I try to fix them if I can. And believe me, I have plenty of pictures that I've made mistakes on and can't fix. So, it happens. Okay, so there's the tail. Now that looks a little more um, like it's balanced more, because his head was sticking way off to the side, and there was nothing here to balance out the head going this direction. Now he has a tail and it balances it out. I could have made a different kind of animal. I could have put on like a, a big rabbit's tail, big round tail. I could have put on a fox's tail. It would have been all poofy and up. Um, I could have put the alligator's tail on the back. Any tail there worked. Um, so this is my project. Now maybe um, Maybe I want to add something here. Let's, let's make his claws a little darker like this. You see, see, that added a little bit more. Maybe I'll even take, and because this is supposed to be grass, I'll make some little lines like this. Okay, let me see those little lines. And that helps make it look more like grass. And I can put more around here and there. But the whole thing is that the wax does not, the water does not stick to the wax. Okay, so the wax resists the watercolor paint. Now, this is just like on mom and dad's car. When they take it and they get it cleaned and they wax it, the wax is to help keep off all the dirty water and stuff that's on the road. It keeps that dirty water off of the car so that the car doesn't rust as fast. Okay. All right. So that's that. I hope you all enjoy. Have fun. Be creative. See how many different animals you can put together. Alrighty. Have a great day. See you later.